I've stated previously that 2023 is a brand new year with a brand new direction for me and this channel. I want to be talking about a lot of new games that I'm really enjoying and I want to showcase all the ways that I'm having fun and how you can have fun too. And one of the games I've been playing an awful lot recently and really want to sit down with you guys and talk about is Hearthstone by Activision Blizzard, but don't let that scare you off. If you're not familiar with this game, it's a lot of fun and honestly I do not see this as pay to win at all. Now Hearthstone is honestly one of those games where I kind of feel I don't really need to explain what it is. I feel it's popular and you know well known enough that I can kind of forgo that but at the same time I'm well aware there may be some folks on my channel who don't know what Hearthstone is about. So I'm going to introduce you to Hearthstone and then I'm going to talk about whether or not I think it's worthwhile getting into in 2023 and kind of how you can do so. And then I'm going to run a series of videos talking about the different decks that I play in this game because this is a card game um, and how I have fun. I'm not necessarily showcasing the very best gameplay or the very best decks, although a lot of these are, you know, based on famous net decks. Um, I just want to showcase what I'm doing that I'm having fun with and maybe inspire you to do the same. So, what is Hearthstone? Well, Hearthstone is a card game set in the same world as World of Warcraft. The basic concept is that you and your opponent are two of the in-game characters sitting across the table from each other at one of Azeroth's many inns and taverns playing this card game. You have a deck of cards, usually 30, your opponent has the same, and you are represented by one of the various named heroes and characters and anti-villains from the uh, Warcraft universe. People like Sylvanas, uh, Windrunner for the hunters I've got here, Arthas Menethil, the Death Knight, obviously Ildan Stormrage for Demon Hunter, Thrall for Shamans. There's loads of different stuff going on here. Some very famous characters if you're familiar with the Warcraft lore. And essentially you play this card game against each other. You have 30 health, your opponent has 30 health, and you draw cards from your deck and you play them each turn based on how much mana you can use. And obviously that ramps up as the game goes on. So at the start of the game, you can only play a couple of very small cards. Later on, you can start playing multiple big cards. And, it, you know, sorry, it ramps up like that. Um, and you're trying to destroy your opponent, basically get their health down to zero. Last player standing wins. What makes Hearthstone so different from games like Magic uh, the Gathering Arena is that this could not work as an actual print card game. Like, the, the way that these cards work just doesn't make sense. There is no way you could do this kind of stuff with actual cards. Just as an example, if I go into the Paladin set here and scroll through to one of the cards that when I read it recently genuinely made me laugh out loud is the Dragon Anachronos, who should be here on this page. Send all minions two turns into the future. How do you do that in a generic card game? You'd have to remember what creatures are on the table, carefully set them all to the side, remembering their health and their mana and everything that's happened to them um, and their attack values, and then in two turns time, remember to bring them all back perfect. Or we could have a look at some of the other ones that do things basically where they remember stuff that's happened in the game. One of the priest decks that I've been running recently runs with a very particular hero character in it that when I play her, what she does is she remembers every single creature that has died earlier this game and makes them do their death rattle abilities again. This essentially also means that if you were to be playing this as an actual card game, you're going to have to be making notes of everything. You can't do this. Some of the major abilities, etc., you know, cause you to cast spells from other classes, cards that you don't even necessarily own yourself. How can you do that with an actual card game? And that's what makes Hearthstone so special to me, that this is an absolutely crazy off the wall experience. It's defined not as just balanced in the sense of, you know, there's a couple of decks that work and things like that. Most uh, most of the different classes have numerous different various decks that do work and do stand up well. Once you get to top tier, yes, that list starts narrowing, of course, but for the most part in the lower tiers, any single one of the classes will do all kinds of crazy stuff and you can just have endless fun with it. Hearthstone is all about everything being ridiculously broken. You will create a deck that you look at and you laugh to yourself and say, I can't believe this. This is absolutely insane. If I can pull that off, it's going to be utter madness. Then you actually pull it out and you manage to pull that off and your opponent counters it with something as equally ludicrous. 
I was playing a game as an example with my armor druid deck here. The aim of this is essentially I try to survive the early game as long as possible, and later on I use a particular card to allow me to cast tons of minions, big expensive minions, using my armor rather than the limited mana that I have. And I was playing a game with this where I pulled out a whole ton of really big creatures. And I'm sitting there looking at my opponent thinking, there is no way you can beat this. There is no way you can beat this. Until he plays that exact priest card I was talking about earlier, and all like 30 of the creatures that had died earlier in the game, dealing three damage to me when they died, all did it again. So I took 90 damage and was just very, very dead. And it's one of those things where I didn't even feel bad about it at the time because it was so unexpected, I didn't see it coming, and it was just like, well played. Well played, my friend. But the question I suppose is, is Hearthstone worth getting into in 2023? If you've never played this before, is it one of these card games where, you know, you need to have every single card in the latest set if you want to be competitive? Now, the answer to that question is a simple yes and no. <laughs> yeah, simple. Yeah, I know I said simple. Ultimately, if you want to be top tier platinum, yes, you are going to need to have very specific cards. You're, there are certain decks that do form in the meta, and you are likely to want to be playing one of those decks or one of the decks that counters it for an off meta. And of course, that's going to be unavoidable. But if, like me, you're playing for fun, you're playing just to complete like your battle pass, your tavern pass, sorry, and open some cool new cards and build some cool decks and have fun, then absolutely this is worth getting into. No, you do not need to pay a cent. Just starting the game is going to give you a whole ton of basic cards, and even the biggest, most crazy of the top tier decks use a lot of what are referred to as the core set cards. Cards that you will have right from the outset in your collection. And yes, as you go, you may decide you want to buy booster packs and open some cards, and there are some actual little rules that do help with that as well. Legendaries, for example, if you have have really bad luck, you are guaranteed a legendary after so many pack openings. Of course, you might get multiple legendaries in there before them. You have 10 different classes to work with. I think it's 10. Am I counting 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11 classes because they've just added the, uh, sorry, they've just added the Death Knight. You've got 11 classes to work with, plus all the neutral cards. You can find something, play with something using the core sets, get a feel for what you enjoy, and then start opening card packs as rewards for gameplay, seeing how you do, and climb up there. There's no direct pay to win. There's no hero that you can buy that is just flat out better than anyone else. And everything is ultimately based on the luck of the draw. But even then, when it comes down to it, if you have a particular card that you really want to get, if I were to open up, for example, um, the Warlock cards, I'm sure I can find one here that I don't have. Yeah, here we are. I don't particularly want this. But if I wanted Altar of Fire, you can see I don't have it. I can just craft it. I can get rid of all the cards I don't like. I can disenchant those cards and I can enchant the cards I actually need. Now, ultimately, I've been playing Hearthstone pretty hectic now for about two, two and a half months again. I started just as the recent um, Wrath of the uh, March of the Lich King expansion launched. Just before that, in fact, I started back in uh, Murder at Castle Nathria, the set beforehand. And you can see I've already got a whole ton of standard decks. Now, these aren't all particularly viable. The first nine there are all solid decks with good win rates, as are three or four on this page. A lot of them are just play arounds and things like that, but you can see how many decks I've managed to amass over the space of two and a half months with very minimal payments. I don't have money to be spending on this kind of stuff. I'm just using my Google Play Points rewards from the Play Store, and plus a few rewards that I've earned by playing World of Warcraft and going through the game here. Because the more you're playing, every day you get your daily quests, you get weekly quests, these allow you to go up a tavern pass, and I know what most people are thinking, hang on, this is Activision Blizzard, they're going to want you to pay through the nose for this, and the answer is, well, actually, no, not really. If I scroll all the way back to the beginning of the tavern pass, all the way back here from page 1 of 21, you'll see that the first page, yeah, there's some interesting stuff on the premium track, which is the top line, the 10% boost to how fast you can go up the tavern pass, some, you know, unique card arts and things like here for Grand Magister Romarth. Some of the characters get unique uh, 
art here. So if you're playing Hunter, you can change the default artwork for Hunter from Rexar to Death Keeper Illyria with her own unique voice lines and things like that. But there's nothing overly crazy there. In fact, it's the free line at the bottom that gives you Lothamar Theron, who is one of the craziest cards in this expansion, doubling the stats of all minions that are still in your deck when you play him. Even if he dies, it's already happened. Then you get like a card pack here for the March of the Lich King. There's another one at level five. As we go up the ranks here, you can see that most of the rewards are actually on the free track and the premium rewards are either just speed boosts or gold variants of cards that you will already have or new artwork for new characters. So if you're playing as a shaman and you don't really want to be using Thrall, for example, you could here swap out for Scourge Slayer Vash and have different voice lines and different artwork representing your shaman. But the vast majority of this, it's all on the free track, so you do get the most rewards without having to pay an, a single penny, and to me, that's really cool. And I've been having so much fun with this. There are so many decks that I want to talk about with you folks and showcase these in action. The Spell Shock deck, which is all about basically using your hunter's attacks to make a Spell Slinger even bigger, a Shock Spitter even bigger, so that when it comes out, it deals massive damage to your opponent and usually kills them in one turn. My Frost Death Knight deck, which again is all about sort of stalling and just building things up as you go. The Scythe deck, a Demon Hunter deck, a deck that doesn't have a single creature in it. Hilarious when someone drops a card like Patchwork that destroys uh, you know, a creature from your play area, from your hand and your deck, and just nothing happens because it has a very specific way of getting creatures onto the battlefield. There is that armor druid that I mentioned earlier, which is all about building up your character's armor and then spending it on a ton of creatures in one go. There's a concoction rogue that's all about mixing various different concoctions and chucking them at the opponent with a lot of random luck in there. XL mage about getting the biggest, heaviest spell possible and hitting them in one go. And the shadow priest deck that I lost to that time, I've rebuilt it. I kind of watched what my opponent was doing. I had a look at those cards and I've added a couple in of my own and I've been having a lot of fun with that as well. Some of the decks I use are based on top tier net decks. I've gone online and looked up various different net decks and I've got an example of what I want to do, but I do try to modify them and change some of the cards around myself. I play games with them, I win, I lose, but I have fun and that's the key point. 2023 is a year where I want to be showcasing what I'm having fun with and showing you how you can have fun too. And I think Hearthstone is a game where I can have a lot of fun and I can show you how much fun we can have too. Is it worth getting into in 2023? Absolutely. I got back into it after years of not playing right at the end of 2022. And for me, the current expansion is actually one of the most fun I've had in a long time. I'm a big fan of the Arthas Menethil story in Warcraft 3 and how it continues use through World of Warcraft. I love the Blood Elves. Blood Elves are like my main race in World of Warcraft. They're the characters I play the most. Um, so an expansion of cards that is based entirely on the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, on Arthas Menethil, and on the Blood Elves and the Sunwell and stuff like that is absolutely perfect for me and it's great fun. And beyond that, of course, you have other sets currently in Standard as well. Um, some people do look at the concept of Standard and say, oh, well, you know, it's just a money-making scheme. I look at it honestly. I don't like playing Wild because Wild, to me, has just too many variables. There are too many cards. And when you have that many options, there usually ends up being one big way to win. Um, and that is still very much the case in Wild. For me, Standard by rotating means you constantly have to, like, keep refreshing things. Yeah, sure. But it also gets rid of some of those really ridiculous combos that start coming up. Um, eventually they drop off and you have to find the new combos and I really enjoy that. So currently, we've got March of the Lich King based, as I said, on Wrath of the Lich King and the Blood Elves. Murder at Castle Nathria based in Revendreth. That's all very much like a Cluedo expansion um, with sort of law and order references. There's a lot of courtroom theme stuff here, searching for clues, that kind of thing. It's a really cool, unique expansion. Voyage to the Sunken City. If you fancy a load of deep sea Cthulhu style terrors and horrors, that's a really cool set for that as it goes down into Vashir um, and has a look at all these really warm watery stuff. Fractured Alterac Valley um, is all about like that war between the uh, 
the Stormpike Dwarves and the Frost Wolves in Alterac Valley, and you've got a lot of cards based on that as well. United in Stormwind, it's all about the Death Mines and Stormwind. There are Horde cards in there as well. Forged in the Barrens, again, it, there's a lot of uh, sort of everything that goes on in the Barrens in the game, sort of that really wild, quite piratical expansion. So you've got a lot of pirates and things in those two as well. It's a lot of fun right now. I honestly think, having played Hearthstone for you know many years now, I've played this game since it first launched, this to me is actually one of the best times to get into it. I think you get a lot of free stuff when you start up. You can really start building decks quickly. Um, they do a thing usually when you start, a couple of weeks after you start, they literally start giving you a free deck. Um, where you get to play numerous different ones and see what you think about them. Then you can keep one um, at the end of that week. Your choice, you get to play all nine and then keep the one that you like. Yeah, it's well worth getting into. And if you like this kind of thing, stick around. I'd love to showcase more of this, talk about some of my favorite decks, showcase some really cool gameplay um, and see what you all think. Please do let me know in the comment sections down below if you play Hearthstone, what you play, what decks you enjoy, how you're finding it. And if you don't play Hearthstone and you're interested in getting into it, let me know in the comment sections as well. Otherwise, come join me on Discord. I'm going to be opening up channels for all the games that I talk about so we can have fun with those as well um, and get to know each other, maybe play some games, do some firesides and things like that. I don't know. I think we can have a lot of fun with this one together. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching. Happy sailing and see you all next time.